Hello. Yeah. Hey, Bennett. Hey there. Let's see who else is coming in. Julian said he might be late. Six ish. Hold on. What'd you say, Alan? Julian might be late, possibly around six. Yeah, that's what he said. All right, and I haven't talked to the library yet, so <laughs> about, the about the table. Uh, we'll get to that on the agenda. Yeah. We can blame you um, in person. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I did notice something yesterday, and I was, like, sitting at that space in Antonio's Pizza, right? And there's, like, these, like, little lights, like, strung up, you know, and they go through one of our trees, and one of the parts that, like, there's these bulbs, they, it, it's, like, smashed, so it's, like, the filament is, like, touching the tree, and I <laughs> worry about it, like, burning down the tree, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'll look into that. Bennett, did you see I put out the newsletter today? I didn't, but I thank you so much for doing it. I, yeah. um, I think this is the only time I've missed doing it. I'll get it next month. Thank you. Yeah. I realized it hadn't gone out, so I just threw it together quick. All right. I think uh, Britt is here as well. She has I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm sick, so I'm going to leave my camera off. Okay. And I'll keep an eye on that. And Bennett, you'll take notes this time? Yes, as soon as my um, computer gets unstuck, yes. Okay, that's great. Um, all right, so can we approve the June minutes? There's no public comment yet. So. Yeah, oh, I did, I was wondering about um, if we called the Sugarloaf Nursery correctly, like, is it? Sugarloaf Nursery or is it Sugarloaf Gardens? Because like when I went online to try and find like a graphic to put on Facebook, it like nothing came Sugarloaf. up for the nursery, but they came up big time for gardens. I think they're see. gardens. I think I remember that from a thank you that I wrote months ago. Yeah, Sugarloaf Gardens. Is, is okay. Yeah. All right. I guess that needs to be corrected in the minutes because yeah. it says nursery. Okay. So we should correct that in the minutes. Okay. See if anybody's in there. Okay. Uh, so minutes approved. <laughs> Only yes. a few of us were there, but yeah, I wasn't there. Sarah, were you there last month? No. Okay. And Brett was okay. So, how do we approve minutes? Um, I guess we have a quorum. So, if the majority of us who say thumbs up and they're approved with that correction by Shoshana. So approve? Approved. Okay. So two and O oh and two abstentions. Britt, you weren't there either, right? I don't know what she was. Oh, okay. Britt's gone. <laughs> What's that? Britt is gone. Does that still give us a quorum? How do we how many do we need for a quorum? I forget. Yeah, there's four of us, so that's a quorum. Okay, all right. I don't know what happened to Britt, but... Uh... Okay, so uh, that's done, approved, um, with that one change of Sugar Loaf Gardens. Uh, minutes, no, hours, not minutes, right. So, uh, Shoshana? Um, let's see, maybe five? Okay. Bennett? I don't think I had any. Okay. Uh, Sarah? Two. Two. Britt, are you there? You back? Yes, it kicked me off. I'm back. Um, Maybe an hour. Well, you have this meeting too, so. Oh, okay. Two, two, three yeah. hours. Two, two, okay. yeah. I can't, you can't do halves, right? So we'll just say three. Three, three, okay. Actually, update me. I had three because I did that planning in June. Okay, good. Um, 
in me, uh, I don't know how many hours, I'll say eight. I'll wait for Julian and Ellen. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, so now on to business. Do I need to share the agenda? Does everyone know it? Oops, that's not what I want. There we go. I'll share it. Uh, share screen. Everyone see it? Yep. Okay, so we go to the chair's report. Uh, I'm going to get rid of it, so I'll stop sharing. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we're getting ready for a Saturday. I won't be there Saturday. There's somebody else coming in. Let me add Brooke to be able to participate. Okay. Brooks is on also. Um, I won't be this Saturday, but it sounds good. I talked to Alan. He says he has the hardware cloth to wrap around the trees for protection, trunk protection. I'm wondering if we want to meet before Saturday and do some of that, or we just want to do it on Saturday. Actually, that'll come up as an agenda item later, but. Yeah. Um, any opinions? Uh, I'll be hard pressed to get anything and before Saturday, although I think I can do Saturday. Okay. I would be too. And Saturday is going to be tight for me anyways. I'm going to have to like blaze like the second we're done planting or working tree care. Okay, well, hopefully we'll get lots of people volunteering from the community. <laughs> um, so we'll just, we'll do the, we'll create the cages on Saturday and put them up at the same time. So some people can work on that while others are mulching and pruning and weeding. Are we doing um, hardware cloth cages? Or are we doing like the those bag kind of things? We're doing hardware cloth that'll just protect the trunk. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. I've I've done those before, so I'm <laughs> experienced at least. Great. That'd be great. So bring your friends and uh, try to get a crowd there. Um, okay. I attended a grants webinar. We're going to talk about the grant a little later. Uh, it's the Cool Corridors grant from the state, and they're offering thirty to fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to plant trees, especially in social justice areas. Uh, but we'll talk about that later. Um, Alan mentioned an August site visit, maybe, so we'll talk about that soon. Uh, Greenfield Tree Committee on the twenty third, which is two weeks from today. They're doing a tree walk at 6 p.m. I'm going to join. If anybody wants to go up with me, that'd be great. All right. When is that again? I want to write that down. It's two weeks from today, June, uh, July 23rd at 6 p.m. Meet at the Common in Greenfield. Okay. And uh, Julian and I attended the Tree Wardens Dinner, and it was great. The woman uh, who spoke first talked a lot about... Um, tree protection during construction projects. And she was very funny and very smart and was showing just a ton of, um, let me add somebody into this, uh, just showing everything that people do wrong. So she said, she doesn't understand why you put the, um, the boards around the tree trunk because no truck should be within 50 feet of the trunk to get that close, you know? She said, if they're hitting the, that, the tree guard, that they're already damaging the tree so bad that why bother protecting the trunk? That's her opinion. So it's very good, really smart and sassy and uh, well spoken. So I, she's supposed to send me Ellen. I think she's supposed to send you the um, her slides that I'd like to share with the committee. So if you could send that to me at some point. Hey, I haven't received the reminder or reach out to us. Good, thank you. Uh, okay, then oh, I was in Norwalk, Connecticut. I'm gonna add one more, show you one more thing if I can find it here. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I was in Norwalk, Connecticut for a show and next to the parking garage they had these lovely protection around the trees. They were like tree wells and they were lovely when they were installed. Now they were completely strangling the uh, tree. So <laughs> let me see if I can get this. There we go. Great. Share screen, check this out. 
thought you'd all appreciate this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Pretty so ugly. I wrote I wrote to the uh tree warden in Norwalk or whatever the equivalent is, and I have not heard back, but I'm I will pursue this. So anyway, what not to do? We're learning a lot about that. Okay. Um Alan, Hemlock Woolly Adelgids. Um, I was speaking to a guy actually from the bird club who said he's been on some of the research on the parasites of the woolly dudges that they're starting to release. And I checked into trying to get some of them and they're not available to the public. But I'm wondering if they'd be available to the town, if you could look into that. Yeah, they, um, they've they actually released some in Amherst um, okay. already, in various, mostly on the Holyoke Range. Um, I'm not sure what if they've released any of the newer um, attempts of uh, predator release, but I can look into it. Yeah, that'd be great if uh, I could get a few from my area and we could start spreading them around town. So, yeah. So, so there's promise for the woolly adelgid. It sounds like this beetle that they're releasing. There's a couple of choices, but one that they got on the West Coast that wasn't quite hardy enough, but maybe it's starting to be hardy or so. Anyway, oh. that's all I have. Uh, Julian's not here for the assistant. I think Julian uh, is here now. Julian is here. And he was, and then he I was, kind of on. disappeared again. Oh, Sunrise Amherst showed up at some point, but no, it's not there now. Okay. Um, so until he gets there, Sarah, you want to do the treasurer's report? Our current balance is eleven thousand dollars, one hundred sixty-seven and twenty-nine cents. Um, there were two deposits: one in April, April fourth, for one thousand nine hundred and twenty, which was that um, pay into the tree fund that we were expecting. Mm -hmm. Then there was a donation on June twenty-fifth for a hundred dollars. That was the woman who we planted a tree in her brother's honor. And uh, we just received today, July 9th, $750 from the Amherst Garden Club for planting trees and flowers, other plantings, um, on the Newtown Common. So that hasn't been processed to our account yet. It's pending. It takes about a week for everything to get cleared. Um, hmm but that should uh, appear in our next update. Okay, uh, Shoshana, can you send a thank you note to them? Do you have the, the cards? Um, at, I thought, thought I gave you some, but. I did have some, but I feel like I may have given them to Sarah, maybe? Did I give them to you? No? I don't think so. I don't have any paper like hard paper stuff yeah I, like i know i had them at one point but i feel like they left my custody and went to somewhere else but i can i can scare up something all right i might have some more too um brit do you have them nope i've never seen them okay all right uh yeah we have nice cards that we send out uh, with the drawing um by the woman who used to work at Collective Copies, whose name is not coming to me at the moment. Um, anyway, anything else there? No? Okay. So That's it. Alan, Tree Warden's report. Um, yeah, I got a bunch of random stuff, some of which we're going to talk about <clears throat> later. Um, <clears throat> contacted Bigelow Nursery about the dead oak trees. They're, they're reaching out to the grower where they who they bought those bare root trees from to see if they can uh, warranty them. Uh, I do need the minutes um, for the vote to purchase the hardware cloth. So I have the signed form from the committee stating that you approve the release of funds for the hardware cloth, but I don't have the vote showing you did it. So just, I don't have the copy of those minutes yet. Maybe that's what we voted on tonight. Um, we approved that Last month or two months ago? I yeah, I looked, I looked for them for some reason. Yeah. I couldn't find them anywhere. Um, 
Uh, can we re-vote now and do that? Um, or <laughs> someone could just send me the minutes from last from two months ago. If they're not or, in the minutes, uh, all right, I'll I'll look through the minutes, but just in no, case. No, I couldn't I couldn't find the minutes, period, for that month. <clears throat> so yeah. Okay. If somebody has those minutes, um send them to me. That's all I'm saying for that month. All right, I will look in my files, but um <clears throat> All right. If not, we'll reapprove okay. them. Or you, yeah, yeah. And Should the Garden we... Club Amherst okay, did um, did reach out uh, to the town to want to donate money for planting the new flower bed in front of town hall, which is you know it's roughly you know almost four feet, three feet wide and about almost sixty feet long. Uh, runs in front of town hall, uh, facing the North Common, um, and. Uh, we just, after discussing it, we figured out the easiest way to do this would be to, because the tree committee has the, it's set up this way for a donation to come in and then spend that money pretty quickly. Um, so we put it in the shade tree committee fund. Um, since the shade tree committee wants to be a B city, um, so we could work that into <clears throat> a pollinator garden uh, for front of town hall. So we're gonna discuss that later. Today, um, you may have to have a tree hearing for Heather Stone, and uh, which is in Echo Hill, in Echo Hill Circle, I think it is called, or Echo Hill Road. Um, they want to install these little tiny micro roundabouts, um, and there's a white pine that might be impacted by that. Um, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I went to the meeting and he was like, oh, yeah, no sweat. And then like, yeah, yeah I knew it. <laughs> so we're, we're still looking to see if, you know, if the road can be moved just a little bit, then I think we could probably save the white pine. Um, we're checking it out. Um, so what we may want to do today is actually pick a date for a site visit. And then if we do it, then I'll have a date and I can post that date and let everybody know we are holding a a site visit and a tree hearing. Um, and then just quickly, I think, yeah, I went to the Tree City USA Awards ceremony. Was that before our last meeting? I can't remember. Um, the award ceremony? I, yeah, we can sell again. I don't remember. So. Yeah, Tree City USA, Julie and I attended the meeting. Um, and it was nice, very nice presentation um, all around for the towns. I think it was 37 years, 38 years. Um, and then uh, I would like to get the committee's opinion on um, beech leaf disease and treating it. So they have a treatment now to treat the nematode that is causing beech leaf disease, which is killing many, many beaches in the forest and in the landscape. Um, Landscape trees have a hope of being um, protected with this treatment um, to treat all I think it's seven of the beech trees that are on the North Common and the Main Common. It costs um, a little over $5,000. Um, that money would come out of the capital fund, the uh, $40,000 for tree planting and tree removal and tree pruning and all those fun things. Um, so it would be an injection. So they would inject the trees with a, essentially it's a fungicide that has been registered for other uses. And it recently has been for an emergency use has been labeled for um, beech leaf disease to kill the nematodes. It also includes uh, a soil treatment of um, a phosphate material which helps invigorate the tree. So it injects, it's a soil injection around the trees. Um, so that 5,000 would be for injecting the trees and the, the root treatment to invigorate the trees. Um, and uh, um, Bigelow, uh, not Bigelow's, um, Bartlett Tree would be the people doing the work, the company doing the work. This would be a good topic for a op-ed column or something in the Gazette, um, the different problems that our trees are facing and, mm -hmm. and what we're doing about them. 
So anybody wants to do some writing, maybe Brooks, that might be something for you to do or? I don't, I don't feel like I know a lot about it. <laughs> well, it, for any of us, it'd be learning, you know, be studying yeah. and researching it. And, but, right, right. Yeah. Um, what's what's the prognosis? Do you think, Alan, that this um, this would work? Currently, the trees. That's a great question. The, the trees that we're working to protect, either I haven't been able to find an infestation yet of the nematode in them. Um, doesn't mean it's there. I just haven't been able to see it yet. The the large bee trees down by Amherst Golf Course on South Pleasant Street. Um, just as you leave town heading south on 116 there. Um, those are heavily infested and they're, you know, probably not even worth trying to inject at this point. Um, uh, and that's been about a three year, three year infestation that's taken them to the stage. So um, if you want to see what beech leaf disease looks like, just stop by and walk underneath those trees and you'll see um, the damage uh, it causes very quickly. So yeah. if the, the nematode feeds on the bud when it's closed, it feeds on the leaf inside the, the bud. So it does all the damage before the tree even leaves out. Um, but we'd, I'd definitely be happy to, you know, I think that's a great idea. It's an opportunity to educate people about each leaf disease. Um, I was just going to ask about the, um, you know, roughly what is the size and or age of the seven beech trees that would be treated? Like how mm -hmm. significant are these trees? They're, they're pretty significant. Um, you know, we went to great lengths to protect all the beech trees on the North Common for the project. And, you know, we chose to protect the beech trees because they were the healthiest trees on the Common and the linden trees. Um, and uh, so the beech trees... Uh, range in diameter. The seven beech trees are four, 20 inch, 30 inch, and these are diameter of the tree at four and a half feet off the ground. So 20 inches, 30 inches, 33, 16, 22, 31, and a, and a four inch uh, beech tree. Um, so they're, they're, they're mature. Some of them are mature shade trees. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, you know, I just want to bring that to the committee. It's something I, I really want to do. Um, I feel it's, you know, I'm not a big, you know, a lot of my philosophy is, you know, it's in the urban environment, it's a bit of a tough love for trees. Town doesn't have a lot of money to throw at, you know, a lot of preventative maintenance. Um, but these are, these are very significant landscape trees in the center of town that um, would be, terrible to lose and there's there's hope that there'll be you know a treatment for the a, a more lasting treatment for the the nematode um control um, unlike emerald ash borer where emerald ash borer they don't really have they're getting close but you know we're going to lose those ash trees before they have a, a cure for that so yeah. or a, a natural predator so how long how long theoretically would this treatment last? The injections last about two years, I feel. Again, this is this is just research as just wrapping up that they've haven't had a lot of time, but they've seen good results. Both with the you can do a foliar treatment, which in, you know, you have to soak the entire tree with this, you know, fungicide and get the tree to absorb it systemically that way. Um, the injections, 100% um, of the chemical is a small amount of chemical gets goes right into the tree and may last longer in the tree than the foliar application. The foliar application, actually, I think it takes three applications each year um, and the injections are just one application a year, possibly two years um, for two years. Sarah, you had your hand raised. That was my question was about how hmm. long the treatment would last and whether hmm. we would be anticipating dosing again. Yeah. I, I do think that after two years, we, we would probably be doing this again. 
So somebody's joining in. Julian's here, okay. Uh, Julian, you have your hand raised. Uh, there he is. Julian, did you want to say something? No, well, he's here anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anything else, Alan? That's it. And yeah, you know, I don't, I guess I just was looking for input from the committee if you feel okay with this, if you're concerned about the application of, a, you know, the fungicide, the injection the process. Um, I'm really happy to hear that you're interested in doing an educational component on it. So that's great news. Um, so I, I did want to go backtrack a bit on the Tree City USA thing. So um, the town has been a Tree City USA for a long time. And UMass has been a Tree City USA, sorry, Tree Campus USA, um, I think for three or four years now. Um, Amherst College uh, is now a Tree Campus USA as well. And then Eversource has also um, been awarded Tree Line USA, so for utility companies and for their efforts in, you know, tree preservation, pruning, proper tree care, proper, proper pruning practices, you know, all those things that people feel utility companies gonna do. Um, they've, they've done a lot of work to, to improve their, their practices over the years. So um, at the meeting, I actually had a photo taken. Um, unfortunately, the, the crew from Eversource didn't get up to join us and I didn't catch it, but I had Amherst College and UMass staff join the town of Amherst. Um, for a photo where I, so with the thought that we would do a press release um, and I have the photo now um, of all the people, entities, the largest landowners in town that are working to maintain our urban tree canopy. So um, something I wanna work on. Yeah, Bennett. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to your, um, thank you for that, Alan. I just wanted to go back to the um, uh, the beech leaf disease um, that, is there any, what's the likelihood that if, if we, you know, if you go ahead, if you did this tomorrow, what's the likelihood that in a month somebody would write to bring up some controversial issue regarding the fungicide? Like, is it is it remotely controversial? Is there any is, is there is there any do you know of any negative um environmental impacts that it is known to have i, I asked that assuming that there's not but i think i, I don't i, I want to prepare for that if there is yeah so i mean every every chemical out there has some sort of impact on it um so for the fungicides already labeled for use on things like sycamore anthracnose so that um you know, the tree won't get hit in the spring when the cool, moist weather and the anthracnose kills the, the bud and causes the tree to have to re -leaf again. Um, so you can actually, they've been using this for a long time. It's not a new fungicide. Um, and it's the fact that we're going to do the injection method, you know, 100% of the material, and it's we're talking small quantities of material, um, get directed injected directly into the tree. So it's, it's in the tree tissue. Um, and it uh, ultimately will break down with ultraviolet light um, in the environment. Is there any way that we could watch the procedure either as a committee or make it a public event and advertise it, include it as part of a tree walk, something like that, where we could, or is it too hard to coordinate with? The company doing it yeah i mean you know it's it's much easier to coordinate injections than it is spraying foliar spraying so um you know foliar spraying gotta wait for the right weather and the conditions and it needs to be done at two o'clock in the morning and you know because you don't want people walking around while you're drenching the tree so um it is it's really going to be we're going to have it we're going to set a date um and if it's not raining you generally want to have a nice clear day somewhat breezy uh to do injections but you know trees going to take up this time of year will be taking 
taking these um, this material up pretty quickly. So it's definitely doable to try to coordinate something like that. And I would recommend it. It's it's impressive to see how they do it. Yeah. So they were they were already done, though. So you think they weren't done yet? No, they've not been oh. done yet. I have to um, okay. I have to post it. So anytime we you know apply pesticides anywhere chemicals we have to post it so i have to go through the posting process um and uh at that point i will set a date for when it's going to happen um and i can let the committee know yeah I, I like idea. the idea of um making it public and maybe like you know have like a two-minute talk about why what's going on you know explaining the the disease um i think it People might be interested in that. That's okay. a great idea, Sarah. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm happy to write something up, Henry. Um, Alan, do you have any idea timeline wise? Like, is this going to happen this year? Oh yeah, it has to happen very quickly. Um, okay. We're we're right in the application threshold now. It needs to happen like in the next two or three weeks. Um, so I have to tomorrow. I got to try to figure out. The posting date and procedures and everything. Well, we haven't posted. We haven't used chemicals yeah. for anything well, since I worked here. So I haven't gone through the posting process, and I got to make sure that I'm up to date on those regulations. Okay. If uh, would you be able to send me whatever information you have about it? Um, I'm happy to write something up, especially if we're going to try to publicize it and have like a little event, or at least make it public. Um, but I don't know very much about the whole procedure. So any, any information you have to send me would be great. Okay. And I'll try to write something up. Definitely. I can send you everything I have. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. OK, so uh, now on to the regular part of the agenda. I'll share my screen again so you can see it all. Uh, OK. So tree nursery care, and Alan, you talked about selecting new species to extend the thing. Mm -hmm. So where are we with that? Um, yeah, we don't, um, you know, we're not going to be buying anything until um, you know, next spring, early, late winter. You know, we'll put in an order for more rootstock. Um, so it's more of an ongoing question for the committee. What, how many more? How big do we want to get? And I, I still have to fix the water line issue at the nursery. So um, that is going to involve digging up a water line to repair a break in it. Um, now that we're in the new fiscal year, I can I can go forward with that process. And Julian, how have you been mowing or watering or? Yeah, so first off, sorry, I joined a little bit late um, and went in and out there. Uh, but yes, basically we mowed, um, in like mid June, um, I trimmed everything down with a weed whacker, um, and watered everything. Alan's been on top of watering, I'm pretty sure, um, more often than that. And, uh, we're probably about due to go in there again, honestly. Um, not sure if we want to just trim it down again. I'd say it's probably better to trim it down than use a skag just to reduce the risk of hitting any trees. Well, thanks for doing yeah. that. Keep, yeah, keep... we've been getting good precipitation, so it's been pretty, you know, remember like water maybe once a week instead of two or three times a week. Yeah, well, keep an eye on it and let us know if you need help with doing some of the trimming and and watering. So yeah, um, it shouldn't it shouldn't be that much of an issue. It probably only takes about an hour. Okay. Anybody have other thoughts about the tree nursery? I just have a question. Um, I have like a whole lot of um, swamp white oaks coming up mm -hmm. in my yard. So it, would it be useful if I like dug them up in the fall and brought them over to the tree nursery? Yeah, so um, yes, I think that's a great idea to take if you've got trees that are, you know, young, little sort of whips that are, you know, dormant. Um, not too big, we can dig them and put them in grow bags and, and start growing them. 
Um, okay. Oaks are a fall dig hazard. So you'd want to dig them in the spring before they start to leaf out. Um, so if you if you um, dig them in the fall, they have a harder time with transplanting. I see. Okay. All right. Then I'll I'll dig them out next spring. But if they're really small, then they might work. It might work. But. I think their first year, you know, yeah. as far as I can tell, I'd never seen them before. But there's like maybe eight or nine of them in my backyard. So I, yeah, I've got some. Uh, I've got some trees in my yard that I was gonna, you know bare root in very early spring and, and pop them in the nursery if possible too so okay great okay anything else on the nursery no um bennett uh, are you I still do. here hold on hey, bennett are you still here taking minutes Yes, I am. I'm just um, doing dinner prep too. So yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. As long as good. I just don't want to be missing all this important stuff. Good. Um, Sarah, you were going to say something? Yeah. Um, Alan, I don't know where you're buying from and what's available, but I think it'd be great to get some fastidiate varieties or something that's really narrow that we could plant mm -hmm. in hard to plant areas like close to buildings, really narrow strips, um near power lines anywhere where we wouldn't typically otherwise be able to plant a shade tree if there's any availability for some of those you know cultivars that can fit those hard spots i think mm -hmm. they're expensive to get when they're big and they're not usually widely available but if we're able to get some smaller ones and cultivate them and then plant them mm -hmm. i think that'd be a great opportunity that's an excellent idea yeah and one question I did have is for the trees that we're going to be replacing, how many trees in total need replacing at the nursery? So we have 10, the 10 oaks um, never leaked out. They have Got not it. pushed any buds. They haven't suckered out. They've been watering them. We've been watering them. And, uh, you know, nothing's happened. So um, I'm going to see if I can get those replaced. Um, Two of poplars, we've got a couple of those that at least one that you know really has not budded out or or suckered out at all. Uh, the several of the two of poplars, you know, their buds didn't take, um, but now they're shooting out very aggressive um, you know, stump growth in the in the grow bags. So, you know, we've already got a, a seedling there that's uh you know over 12 inches tall uh, and growing. So those will probably be just fine. Let them grow up for a couple of years. Um, other than that, everything's doing fine. So we've got, I would say, 11 dead trees out of 40. Um, so. OK. I just want to offer for anyone who's feeling bad about the plantings. I know at um, last month's tree planting, we talked to some of the Girl Scouts and they were like pretty upset that none of the oaks made it. Um, in my job as a landscape architect, 25% die off for whips is like exactly what we plan for. So anyone who's feeling bad about it, just that's, it's very, very normal. Um, and we'll just replace them. <laughs> ah, good to know. Yeah. So you, when you hear about these billion tree plantings or million tree plantings, you take it with a grain of salt because they're not replacing all of those. Yeah. Wow. And they probably have much higher die off in those. So, but yeah. All so, right. Uh, not that I'm incompetent. Yeah. <laughs> I'll share the agenda. Again. Not at all. Totally expect like overplant knowing that about a quarter will die. Yeah. In, um, in non die off news, the uh, witch hazel whip that I took from um, our sustainability festival is doing well in my little container out front. Hey. Good. All right. Uh, so, next on the agenda is second Saturday work days, the 13th. We talked about prepping the tree cages. Do we, do we have tentative ideas for the fall, maybe doing uh, the brook? And um, I spoke with um, Mindy Dom. She's going to meet or try to meet with the people that run the boulders and um, see if we can get them on board 
the um, the grant from the cool card as grant can be planted. Those trees can be planted on private property if you have a letter from the owner of or the manager of the company or the manager of the of the apartment complex saying that they're willing to do it and will support it. So um, I'll keep working with the brook and maybe that'll be one of the fall plantings, but we have a couple other dates. So we should think of where else we might plant for the fall. Is there like a um, neighborhood com com committee of some kind for e either of those complexes that you know of? Not really to my knowledge. Yeah. Be something to find out though, yeah. Yeah, it would be great if we could just get some of the tenants there interested. Yeah. Well, the guy from the brook assured us that he would work with the landscape companies to make sure the trees are protected. And if these tree cages we're doing with around on East Pleasant Street, if that works, we can do that automatically for the plantings from now on. So Good. that might really help. And I feel like Gatehouse Road could really use some street trees. All their trees are dying. Hmm. They're all maples and they're just, they are sad in a very sad state. Is that a town road, Ellen? It is, and that's an excellent location. Um, I just need to reach out to the adjacent you know, property owners and um, make sure. They were supportive when we planted along Belchertown Road. And most of those trees did pretty well, are still doing well. Hmm. Yeah, there's one village. that is dead. What's that? A teeny one. It's like a little bush. It's like 18 inches tall. Yeah. That one's yeah, dead. One the, Everybody else is doing good. Yeah. One of the dogwoods. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Also, um, I think like um the bottom half of Main Street could use a few trees. Yeah, that's been an issue because of uh, of it's there's very little um, right of way, and the owners it's a lot of rental properties. We we had trouble getting approval to plant there. Yeah. What about the town owned portion of it that's not owned by like the town in the town right away, but is. Um, in that apartment complex, affordable housing complex, Watson Farms, mm -hmm. that's owned by the housing authority, right? So would that be easier than a private property? Yeah, there's a couple of locations there where they planted trees when they built that, and those trees are now dead, standing dead trees. Um, yeah, there's a couple spots along Main Street where we could, you know, put trees in. Um, there's, uh, and I've already talked to a couple, at least one of the property owners, they have multiple properties and they are interested in having trees planted um, on Main Street, so. Good, awesome. That is good, yeah. And if um, if we have trouble connecting with them, that's again, something Mindy's very willing to do, so. Um, Alan, did you say there was Watson Farm where you had some interest from the people there or was it a different one? It was a different one further up um, by the bus stop, actually, uh, where the power, the high tension lines cross the road. Oh, the Alpine a, or something? Aspen. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Aspen Heights. They were very upset with the power line clearing. I remember that, yeah. 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 So up, up, around the, up around there, there's some people who, they have multiple places along Main Street, and they actually did a lot of clearing of bittersweet and kind of invasive stuff, and um, they reseeded the area and there's a lot of space there now for mature shade trees to be put in. Um, well, maybe well, we could plant like... some aspens. What was that? Maybe we could plant some aspens there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. Um, I'll talk to Mindy about Watson Farm and uh, meanwhile, and I'll check in with her about the boulders too. And meanwhile, we can continue with Aspen Heights, whatever it is. And uh, I think we'll have a pretty busy fall. We won't be able to get all that done this fall, but we'll see. Yeah. What about August? Are we going to have the picnic? Uh, that's also on the agenda. Let me... Oh, is it? Okay. Is it? Uh... 
August meeting or picnics next, next on the agenda. Okay. Um, yeah, what do people want? Stop sharing so I can find. There we go. Should we do the picnic again, second Tuesday? I think we should. I think it's a fun time to gather with people that like talking about trees in a casual setting. Okay. I thought it was a successful outreach event. I also think maybe for people who like aren't able to come and physically help plant trees, um, but might still be interested, uh, it would be like a good way that they could get involved in person. All right, let's plan that for the second Tuesday in August, and I will um, send out send out the word to um, Greenfield and Northampton Tree Committees. So that'd be good. Um, Do you know anything about the Hadley Tree Committee? Did that like survive? I read something about it, but I haven't heard anything. I haven't seen any new trees being planted in Hadley. So yeah, me neither. Um, uh, and like they desperately need it. We yeah. Uh, I wanted to add, so I'll, I'll be out of town that second Tuesday, so I can't make it then. But um, I had a student who sat in on one of our meetings last year from Belchertown, and he's on their energy and sustainability committee. They don't have a tree committee, but they've been wanting to form one or, or at least incorporate some tree related um, activities into their energy and sustainability work. So it might be worth also inviting some of those folks to come and connect with other um, others. Yes, definitely. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think also um, Caleb, the uh, the new director of, uh, I think it's the Chamber of Commerce, right? Yes. He's, yeah, yeah, that's right. I met him. He's nice. Yeah. He's interested in tree committee type stuff, too. I think uh, we should invite him as well. That's a good idea. Great. So it sounds like we have plans for the August, the August meeting, in lieu of the August meeting. Good. Um, we were going to have it at um, Groff Park last year, and then we ended up having it on the at Kendrick Park. So, should we just stick with Kendrick, or we want to try Groff again? Groff, we'd need to reserve, I guess. I mean, Kendrick has a nice playground. I mean, um, Upper Groff, you don't need to reserve the pavilion for that, but it's always so packed that you can't really sit there anyway. So, um, I vote for Kendrick. This is Bennett. Okay. I like Kendrick. It's nice downtown, new. Yeah. It's just there's no rain shelter. Last year we lucked out because it it was gonna rain, but barely did. So all right, let's do Kendrick again. So I'll could also do the um the new North Common will hopefully be ready in August for um people to, to sit. But uh just in case I'd keep it on Kendrick. Okay, let's do oh, yeah, I've got news uh, or like almost news about the the common um because i was in correspondence with angela about wanting to be um part of the um the ribbon coming cutting ceremony when it happens for us to have a presence there and um so they were saying that like they're waiting for the grass to grow in before they do it to like be like you know extra pretty and so they were and they were also maybe thinking about waiting for the students to come back but they're not entirely sure if they're going to wait all that time so um she's going to keep me posted and if i hear anything i'll send out an email to the group and an announcement on facebook great good um all right so kendrick i'll let the um other tree committees know um brit you'll check in with the belchatown people if someone can check in with the new head of the bid, that'd be good. And then we need to get the word out um, and uh, sort of plan additional things, what to bring, that stuff. So that um, that being said, there is a water fountain now at Kendrick um, Park, thanks to Alan. Um, so that is one, or it, excuse me, the common. So that is one thing to note, have on-demand water. A common has a water. Yeah. Yep. We're using Kendrick though for this. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. True. 
Okay, good. Um, environmental justice neighborhood planting, I talked about, I talked to Mindy and she's totally on board. And if we don't get the grant, then she could use some of her earmark money also for um, to cover the cost. So it sounds like we don't have to use the tree committee fund, which we can't use for non street trees, but we can have, um, we will have money to be able to plant most likely. So good. Uh, solar farm position that came up last month. Um, yeah, so I just would note um, that the bylaw has been edited slightly by the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council, but not a lot. Um, so I would say that it arguably remains the same in function um, as it did before. Um, and I'm not sure if it goes, I think it goes on to the council from here, um, but I'm not completely sure when or what that timeline looks like. Um, but I'm talking about um, the guy who came last month, he wanted us to maybe take a position on the solar farm that, that Coles is doing in. Oh, in that's for like, sorry. I thought you were thinking of solar bylaw yeah. working group. Right. Yeah. yeah. So do we are want they, to take- Are they related? Do they interact? Is I believe they would. Yeah. Um, just because that farm would theoretically be regulated by any bylaw. Um, that being said, I don't think like uh oh, <laughs> yeah, I think you're frozen. Changed um before it got passed, it might it would affect it, but to what extent? We missed some of that because you froze. So <laughs> sorry. What I was saying was um to an extent yes it is impacted by the bylaw um but the bylaw wouldn't really be strong enough in its current form unless it was changed before it got passed i'm is my understanding to directly impact sort of the project as a yes or no it might change certain aspects of it so are there ways that we are restricted as the shade tree committee to take positions on things like this we can take a position. It's not really in our uh, Ballywick, but because if they do this project up where it's going to be up Shoots Bay Road, there's going to be a lot of street trees that are affected when they put the wires to connect it to the uh, the rest of the uh, the grid. So right. if we focus on that in our you know in our position and we vote, we could we could we could do that. We don't have to just do that, but. That can be our 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 lead into it, right? And we we can like take positions on things as a group to say like we don't support this, um, or this is our opinion. Um, if it's like can be tied back or related to street trees, um, but the other thing I would just remind us is that with the direct street trees, we will still have our hearing and we will advise the tree warden on his decision and then the final say isn't with the bylaw or the developer or the town council i believe it's with alan and as long as someone doesn't write it up to the town manager is that correct yeah right. yeah well if that will bump up to the town manager almost definitely yeah um so yeah um i think i think at that point, it's a little late. I think it'd be good to have a position ahead of time that we state and get out into the record. I don't know if that'll help either, but I think that's really the best way to move forward. Okay. So we need something to vote on. I'm not sure how to do that. So I want to come up with a motion. I wasn't here for the, it sounds like there was a presentation or further discussion of, um, the solar plans um at a previous meeting but and I, and I don't have a sense of what other people's feelings on this are but i would move um that the committee takes a public stand against um against the project okay bennett can you on the fly just come up with a a statement right now <laughs> 
Can I can I add something? Um, yes. Before you start discussing the statement, um, you might be interested in if if any kind of statement or on position of the committee isn't specific to a project, but specific to um, solar farms that you know remove forested areas for solar farms. So you'd be against. Um, Solar projects in forest areas, but not a specific project. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think absolutely. that's a question. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, Britt mentioned the thing that Britt said was the same thing I was thinking. I missed, I was not in a meeting. I assume that there was there some sort of presentation on this. And I asked that because I'm embarrassed to say, I'm, obviously, I know that I have, I know that this is a big issue. It's not one that I've, I, I haven't dived deeply into it. And I'm just a little uncomfortable, and I, it's a hugely contentious issue. And I'm a little uncomfortable kind of on the fly, you know, taking a vote on this, much less being the one to draft the measure or to draft, the, you know, it's, I don't feel very comfortable with it. Um, it I, just because I don't, I feel uninformed, frankly. Um, so I just wanted to register that. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, there was a presentation last month. There was. Um, okay, great. Um, but well, we can it, go back and watch that um, on the recording then, right, Henry? And it's also in the minutes. Yeah, um, okay. So if you read through the minutes, it'd be good. Um, but really, it's um, we, can, we don't have to specify the details of the project. We can just say that we, as the Shade Tree Committee, are opposed to removal of trees for solar farms in particular were opposed to the Coles project on uh, Shutesbury Road and then we can specify some of the reasons why we are um, and then including that it will affect street trees along Shutesbury Road as they try to connect the solar farm to the grid. One One question I had is just like what are the options in terms of could we make it more specific to this project rather than solar farms in general? Maybe another solar farm proposal would come forward that we support for a different reason or so on and so forth. Like we don't know what's coming down the road. So I guess like maybe make it specific to not supporting this project. Well, I would say any solar project that clears forest that's my personal opinion. If the other people disagree, that that's fine. We can discuss that. Yeah, I I sort of um, am on Alan's thinking about this. That um, I can imagine like Coles like saying this is like discrimination or it's personal or you know some cockamamie thing like that about if we take a position on that particular project. But if we have a general position that we think that um, all other options should happen before they start cutting trees to make solar farms. And we know perfectly well that all other options have not been exercised at all. There's so many rooftops and parking lots and other places where there wouldn't be this environmental damage and we wouldn't like release carbon that's been stored in trees. So I think we could make a general statement. It could be pretty clear what we think about coals without even naming it. I would take it a little bit farther, Brooks. I, I like the sentiment, but I, I wouldn't necessarily include the phrase, all other options be explored because coals doesn't necessarily own. I, I mean, if we're taking a blanket statement and we're not talking about a specific project, the maybe the only land a person has to develop is forested. Yeah. So they don't have other options to explore. But I think as a committee, we could still safely say development on forested land for solar farms, you know, that's clear cutting, right? And yeah, we yeah. could pretty safely say we don't support developing forested land for solar farms, in, which involves clear cutting, because e there's other things to be done with that forested property that can make money and generate revenue for an owner that don't involve solar farms at all. So I, I think we could be even a little bit more aggressive in our general stance of not 
supporting the removal of forested land for for solar farms or clear cutting of any variety. Yeah, I, I like that. I think like having it specifically just against clear cutting, whether it's for solar farms or clear cutting because I'm wanting to sell lumber. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. Yeah. What, I mean, if it simply, yeah. what if it simply said, we are opposed to the large scale removal of trees for solar farms? Is that too, like, is that too, too generous? Is it too compact? Um, can, can I just ask, is this something that like we plan to publish somewhere publicly or put on our website? Like what is the, how are we planning to? Yeah. Share this. I think we should publicize it, but it would also we would send a letter to the planning commission and the you know the other committees that are discussing this. Yeah, I, I think if that manager. is the case, then we need to be we need to say something more than what Bennett has just suggested. And I think it's not something to be written on the fly. I think it's something to really craft in a careful way, um, especially given that you know one of the there was an article I think it was last year and there might have been more than one um, in the national media about Amherst, about this exact issue. And it pointed to, you know, s people opposing the solar project um, as basically, you know, nimbyists saying like, I don't want this in my backyard. Um, I mean, I think, I think it has to be a more nuanced argument that we're making here. Um, and even per perhaps pointing to some of the, some of what's already been written. I don't know. I think, I think we need to craft it carefully. And I think, you know, there's also this point about development, you know, um, especially with coals, it's like development versus forests. And it's, it's more nuanced than that also. And I don't make any sense today because my brain is not well, but, <laughs> um, but, but I think maybe this is something for all of us to do a little bit of research on, read what's been written and think carefully about how we want to phrase our opposition um, in the most meaningful, you know, potentially powerful way. I, I agree uh, very much so, Britt. They, you know, the, um, the issue, the broader issue, and we can move on, I guess, unless we want to keep talking about it, is the conversion of forest land to something other than forest or tr forestry use. So, you know, forestry use means that the land stays in forest. The, the private landowner can generate revenue or can have for various different products that doesn't involve, you know, hardscapes and, and roads and structures and things like that, or maybe on a smaller scale. But forest conversion in general is, is what we're trying to prevent to something other than forest. So we want to keep the benefits of all the that the forest provides, keep it in forest and allow private landowners to, to keep it in forest. Because if you own 100 acres of land, you're still paying taxes on it um, and you need to generate revenue from it. Most people own land because they want to generate revenue from it um, of some kind. Um, so unless you're extremely wealthy, you can own land for the sake of owning land, um, you need to generate revenue from it. So the committee could look at how, and this people will help do this, how people can keep land in forestry and, and instead of converting it to solar farms or subdivisions. Well, I think that's great. I think we also need to specifically mention this project. And I'm a little concerned about timing. We're not gonna meet now till September. So maybe we need to just take the time, fine, but I think maybe someone should start drafting something and send it around to the committee and we can see if we're on the right page. And then September, we we, we make Did I miss that we're not meeting in August? Yeah, we're having the picnic. Oh, instead, I see, got it. Yeah. <laughs> so we could have a, an extra meeting, but um, I'm not sure that would work, so. Um, but me, in the meantime, I think we should be moving ahead with drafting something. Yeah. Well, you know, I can like just start the conversation. I mean, I'm not going to like um, have all the information research, but I can just like start a letter and send it around and people can put their 
their expertise and knowledge into it. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, why don't you send it to me? I'll send it out to everyone on the committee. Sure. Okay. That sounds yeah. great. Or you can send it to the Shade Tree Committee email, whichever one you have. Okay. I'll I'll send it somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any other comments on this? No, I think that was a good discussion and uh, we'll see how it progresses. Okay, uh, site visit and tree herring in August. Alan, you mentioned you might wanna pick a date now. Correct. I'm gonna step out for a second and grab my calendar. I'll be right back. This would have to be on Zoom, Alan? The site visit would not be on Zoom. The tree hearing would be, yeah. Okay. Um, be nice if we could do something next week, if possible, in case there's going to be a tree hearing. Um, I'll know by the end of this week whether we're actually going to need to hold a hearing or not. Um, I am flexible Monday through Thursday next week. I have Wednesday free. That's it. This is Wednesday. Wednesday. I'm free. And should we say Wednesday the 17th? In the morning? I'm tied up in the afternoon. On the 17th? Wednesday. I could do Wednesday. Wednesday the seventh. So that's next week. Now, and when would you be free? Right. Um, time before noon, well, except for ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, so anywhere between seven and ten, or eleven and noon. So now the question is to you, um, Alan. Could we fit that into my work schedule? And then if not, the answer would be no. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> sounds great. And that's what I'll do. Um, that sounds good. Pros again. Um, I think it would have to be evening or late afternoon. Am I, am I freezing or can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay. Mm, good. So how about... Um, Monday the twenty second. I'm out of town. That's the yeah, only but... evening I have that following week. How about the twenty ninth? Is that getting too far out from when we might be needing need to, to make the decision? Uh, it still gives us enough time. The 29th or 30th are good for me. I can do either. As of now, those are good dates for me. We are talking about July, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes, those work for me. I'm gone the 20th through the 31st, but it sounds like maybe you won't need me then if enough other people are around. All right, Alan, do you, do you have a preference for those two? I can't. I can't do the 30th, but I could do 29th. Okay. Monday the 29th, 7 o'clock? 6 o'clock? What do people want? PM? You're talking PM or AM? What was that? I didn't hear. 7 or 6 PM or AM? PM. <laughs> I think that makes a very long work day for Alan. That's fine. I can yeah. I can do I can do six. That's um All right. it'll be July, a quick site visit. July 29th, 6 p.m. Tentative tree hearing. Sounds good to me. 
tree, no, not tree hearing, site visit. Site visit, site visit, right. Um, you had also mentioned maybe needing a site visit for um, <laughs> the house that's being moved. Uh, currently, the proposed, that's not gonna happen until September, I'm told now, um, and I don't have an exact route yet, and I don't know if trees actually will be removed. So um, that tree hearing may not happen. Um, yeah, that's gonna be tight. <laughs> I don't think they're gonna have to take any trees down to move the house. Um, okay. So where is the site for the 29th? Great question. It's uh, on Heatherstone. Oh yeah. Over where Echo Hill, I think it's called Echo Hill. Lane yeah, it's on Echo Road. Hill. Yeah. I'm sorry, is the note taker, I should have been, it's July 29th at what time? 6 p.m. Monday, July 29th. And the tree hearing is, sorry. We do not have a date yet. Okay, got it. We're, we're doing this in case we have a tree hearing. Um, got it. So we'll have the site visit plan. Okay. All right, so get that on your calendars, everybody, and it'll be in the minutes and I'll get it on the, um, this is not definite yet, Alan, or it is? Correct, it's not definite. So I'll, okay. have to, I'll have to let you know, and then you can let everybody in the committee know whether okay. it's happening or not. Yeah. Good, okay. All right, uh, B City, oh, it's gonna be a long meeting here, but I think that's the only main thing we have left. Yeah, I, I can't remember the last time we talked about this. Um, so, Two different town councilors had let me know that they would be willing to serve as a sponsor of the resolution um, that is required to be officially recognized as a bee city. Um, and they said they would not be able to get the resolution formatted properly in time for the June meeting. Um, I asked how I could help and then I have not heard back from them for several weeks um, and <laughs> should uh, should reach out again. Um, but my assumption is that it will move forward um, at one of the next meetings. Um, and I guess one thing that was not resolved was um, where the money for the application uh, fee would come from. Um, and it sounded at our last meeting, like the tree committee was not comfortable with taking that money from our funds. Um, and so I could certainly ask um, Paul Bachman directly for it to come from a different budget. Um, and when I talked with him about B city, um, which would have been at the sustainability event, I believe in April, you know, he said that f coming up with money for that shouldn't be an issue, so. All right, and then Alan, you had talked about doing the garden in front of the um, city hall as mm -hmm. part of it. So um, part of being a bee city means that you need to do, you need to plant pollinator friendly, bee friendly, gardens, trees, um, you need to do educational outreach. Um, so it's an opportunity if the committee wanted to be involved. There's a number of volunteers from town hall staff that also want to be involved um, to come up with a design and to help plant, um, you know, a bee friendly garden in front of town hall. Um, so we have $750 to purchase plant material. Um, and it sounds like we've already got volunteers who want to help plant. Um, so what we're looking for is somebody who wants to help come up with a design. Um, give me a plant list where I can go purchase and I can go purchase the plant material. And then we schedule a date in late July, early August, where we do the planting. 
This year or next? Oh, this, this year, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. this John Root might be someone to contact. Um, Britt, do you know him? Yes, I know John, just from, you know, coming to our plantings. Um, and then in the last many months, he's sent me many, many emails about native plants. Um, yeah. and, uh, so it'd be yeah. worth talking to him. Maybe he could come up with a design. I'd also be happy to do it. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that sounds great, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And Sarah, if there's anything I can, I mean, you have the professional expertise, but if there's anything non-professional that I can help with, um, I'd be happy to. And obviously I'm happy to help with the planting and all of that. And Alan, I think it's a great idea to use that space to, you know, kind of highlight the commitment of the town and, um, and, and, you know, make it a really nice space for pollinators. We could do our second Saturday planting in August for this set of planting trees. We plant the pollinator garden and hopefully mm -hmm. there'll be some bushes in there. So uh, yeah, let's get moving on that. Um, Sarah and Britt, if you want to work on the design, get that to Alan yeah, and uh, we'll move ahead. Yeah, great. I will. Um, Alan, just to confirm, it's directly in front of Town Hall. You said it was like three by yeah, it's like three feet by s almost sixty feet, I think. Sixty. Um, you'll if you if you stand in front of town hall to the right of the steps to the main door of town hall um, is the new planting bed, um, and it ends over where the road comes out from around the back parking lot of town hall, um, okay. where there is a tree planting. Okay, great. Yeah. I think. Um, there was some plant material too that came out of the old bed that was there. Um, and I can try to come up with a, a list of what those plants are that people, sounds like some people from town hall wanted to put those back in the bed, but I'm not, I don't have no idea what they are, the plants, so. Okay. Yeah, if you have any sense of what they are how or how many, um, I'll it is, it. It is a uh, baking hot, full sun, you know, in the afternoon kind of thing there. Once the sun gets past uh, the yard arm there, it uh, is full sun. Okay. Well, maybe we can include a couple of trees in the, uh, <laughs> in the design so that'll shade it a little bit. Yeah. Julian, you have your hand raised? Uh, I don't know, allow him to talk. Hi, um, am I a panelist there? We, yeah, I just uh, let you be a panelist if you want. Good. Okay, um, anything else about this? Are we set? We'll do the August planting date, which is August uh, the 10th. Second Saturday planting will be the B City planting and Sarah, you'll work with Britt on the design and get that down. Yes. Anything else? No? Okay. Uh, Mary Maple Table, anything new on that? Sean, are you here? Yes. You're muted though. No, okay. no, there's nothing new on the. <laughs> okay. Um, let me share this so we can also. Okay. Town tree inventory and forestry management plan, Alan. Uh we're at 90%. Wow, that's great. Great. Okay. And website update. I assume Bennett, you haven't done anything on that. That's fine. Uh, Correct. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, UMass interns, Britt, is there anything new? Or not sure we need to keep doing that. No, you can take that off, yeah. Okay. State level initiatives. Uh, the chapter 87 update is really not going anywhere frustratingly because of the way our state government works, but uh, we could, I don't know what to do with that. So there's nothing new on it. Significant tree ordinance, Sarah? Nope, nothing new. Nice. All right. 
Well, that's the agenda, except for comments. Uh, Brooke, are you still here, Brooks? No, maybe he's not, okay. So there's no public in attendance. So I think we can uh, call this a meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Yeah, Thank you. Bye. I won't Bye. see you Saturday, but uh, I'll see you soon. Yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.